miracle of Lake Placid. Relive the great moments of ABC Sports exclusive coverage of the 1980 Winter Olympics. We started with a trip up the Great River Henry Hudson discovered in 1609, looking for that fabled Northwest Passage to the Orient. We used it now as our own passage to the North Country, leaving behind the skyscrapers of Manhattan, skimming along by helicopter over the thinly iced waters of the river. We were headed north toward a village in the Adirondacks, a place of 2,700 people who had dared to take on the world of winter sport with all its excitement and glory, and all its attendant problems, too. We were going to Lake Placid for the 13th Winter Olympics. Before it was done, the village would serve as the stage for some of the most unexpected and moving moments ever seen in Olympics competition. During the confusion of the opening days, it would have been impossible to predict that it would end with young people dancing in the streets of Lake Placid and Americans across the land spontaneously singing their national anthem in a display of national pride not seen in a long while, a time of tears and laughter, an unbelieving celebration of the miracle of Lake Placid. The excitement, the tension building, the Olympic Center filling to capacity. The face value of a top ticket for tonight's game, $67.20. Outside, they're exchanging hands at three times the face value. Hello again, everybody. I'm Al Michaels, along with Ken Dryden. It should be a great night. I'm sure there are a lot of people in this building who do not know the difference between a blue line and a closed line. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter, because what we have at hand, the rarest of sporting events, an event that needs no buildup, no superfluous adjectives. In a political or nationalistic sense, I'm sure this game is being viewed with varying perspectives, but manifestly, it is a hockey game. The United States and the Soviet Union on a sheet of ice in Lake Placid, New York. Up ahead to Schneider, shot, shot, goes in! On Schneider! That's the type of goal you don't expect somebody like Freddy Ang to give up. And the United States ties the game at 14 0 3 in the parade. Long shot, easy save by Freddy Ang, but Johnson is there and scores with one second to play in the period. Right now, the clock goes nothing, but it's a stop at one when we looked up at the goal. on this power play opportunity. 13 seconds left in the penalty. Big shot to Dixon. Oh, my God, did they score? Well, a goal that absolutely came out of nowhere. The U.S. team did not seem to be threatening. But Snyder, buzz, long slap shot, saved by Pushkin. The U.S. team is depending a little bit too much now on Jim Craig. He's making too many good saves. Arruzio scores!
hey, the game was close, but they were going to win. Soviets were going to win the game. So it wasn't until the tying goal was scored at the eight and a half minute mark in the third period, and then Ruzioni, of course, scores the goal to make it four three. I mean, at that point, it's insane. And at that point, that's when the sound has feeling. The whole building is rocked and shaking. And then those last 10 minutes were astonishing. Of course, the last minute was a case where um, it's the hardest I've ever had to concentrate in the air because the place is going wild. People in the truck are going wild. Everybody's now a fan. And I remember in that final minute of the game thinking that I've just got to stay inside the game. I can't, I can't let myself go, go wild. I can't let myself be a part of the crowd. Uh, the Soviets were putting the pressure on the U.S. as well at that point, so a goal could have been scored. And I am working uh, with, with blinders on like the horse. Uh, all I'm doing is looking straight ahead because around us, you know, the people who, the support people, everybody's like jumping up down and carrying on, screaming and yelling, and these are the people who are working. I remember just thinking to myself, stay inside. And um, at the end of the game, I couldn't have even told you what I said at the end of the game after I said it, because I was, all I was worried about was just doing the play back. So when I come up with the line, do you believe in miracles? Yes. Uh, it's just part and parcel of calling the game itself, doing the play-by-play. -play. You know, I'm lucky in the sense that, uh, to this day, people talk about it. 